Well, hello, hello, one and all. Short talk in my truck <laughs> with uh, the old guy. That'd be, you know who? Me? Yeah. So here I am in front of my friend Diane's house. And uh, my golly, I, I beat this little rain thing. I'm just going to turn you around here. This is the view outside my window right now. And none of this stuff was here even five minutes ago. But it was so crazy looking at this thing moving in from the north. It looked like a tidal wave. But it was dark on the bottom, and it was just this big cloud thing coming in. Now, it was really moving fast, too. It moved like 15 miles in probably under 10 or 12 minutes. Uh, not, it wasn't that fast. It was about 15 minutes, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, so at any rate, it, the thing is clicking right along for a weather pattern. And uh, so I was going to ostensibly come over here, you see, and uh, do a little bit of tree trimming <laughs> not on them trees there that's that's the neighbor's house I was just kind of showing you what the rainfall looks like so for southern New Mexico by golly you got an overcast day and then on top of that you got rain with lightning first day of, I guess this is Mr. Winter himself announcing uh -uh, the new landlord has moved in <laughs> this is wintry and uh, so anyhow for southern New Mexico, this is rather extreme and really quite unusual this time of year. We almost never get rains this time of year. But uh, anyhow, it's been a very weird year uh, in terms of weather. Maybe that's true for you, too, where you're at. I, I really I really haven't been paying attention in terms of uh, how widespread it seemed this past summer. But just what a weird year it's been. And I, I'm so glad to hear that rain coming down on the roof. This is one of the reasons I wanted to record in the truck. You know, ordinarily I don't like truck recorded um, videos because, well, I don't know, it, it's always like, just pay attention to the road, will you? Well, I'm parked, okay, so I have a, I get out, get out of jail free card. <laughs> I'm gonna have to actually speak up sometimes because of this clatter clatter on top. But that sound right there is just so unusual to a, you know, boy like me. Uh, I was born and raised in Albuquerque and that's only 200 and some miles north of here in very similar weather. They're about another thousand feet higher or more, maybe 1,500 feet higher. Because see, the Rio Grande runs downhill all the way. So anyhow, um, the <laughs> anyway, the a lot of this water is going to end up in what was the Rio <laughs> until next spring. Uh, I guess we'd call it the Great Big Dry. The uh, the Rio, which ain't there. <laughs> that goes down there this morning. A little while ago, I went down and got me some good old breakfast. By golly, that. Uh, that guy at uh, Pit Stop Cafe, that, that Gary guy, when he whoops up a bowl of pasoli, pay attention. It is eaten. I mean, just forget about anything else. All you really want is coffee, maybe a side order of toast. Maybe you like bacon. Pasoli for sure. It's like a holiday dish down here. And I guess it depends on what part of the state you're in because northern New Mexicans make their pasoli in a different fashion, in different recipes and stuff. And uh, so the pasoli down here on this end of the state, I, frankly, I think it's superior, but is they're all good. It's kind of a Christmassy dish, and uh, so I was glad to go down there. The young, young waitress ladies are wearing their Merry Christmas hats, you know, the red one with the white flop thing on the, whatever it's called. And one of them even hung a bell back there, so I mean, that's official. And so I've just been thinking today, I thought, well... I was actually kind of, you know, not necessarily premonition, but it was kind of like, I have a feeling this is going to be a very odd Christmas. <laughs> very strange. But then I thought, well, it kind of becomes what you make it, right? So, I mean, what are my expectations really for this Christmas year? And I thought, yeah, how about instead of a, not so much a Merry Christmas, and I'm not opposed to that. That'd be kind of crazy to be opposed to Merry Christmas. <laughs> but... What about a, con have you a contemplative, have you a meditative Christmas? A Christmas where you set aside yourself from the worries of the world because you don't have to go to work anyhow, right? And you don't have to really even pick up the phone if you don't want to. But you can just set aside time and, and quietly think about something. And, and I got to thinking, when you know, it's never really been clear to me. When people say they're meditating, meditating, and it always sounds vaguely new agey kind of like tm and stuff altered states or whatever and it's like meditation is an honorable thing in the in the wisdom literature and in the wisdom tradition meditating means it doesn't mean 
leaving your body necessarily or you know hitting some abstract qua superior spiritual plateau of some kind no meditating has to do with think on it ruminate chew it over consider it from various angles so for instance has it ever occurred to you the baseball seam that goes around that wiggly woggly thing why that makes sense topologically for a baseball to be sewn that way why didn't they just make it a, a couple of x pieces cross 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 corners why why that zigzagging at any rate when you look into things you begin to think that you know this requires a little more thought than I had intentionally intended to. As an example, here's one. Are all snowflakes really, really unique? I mean, there are no duplicates, none. And how do we know that? And is it true? Well, when you consider stuff, you got to look at it and think, well, have I really thought it over from this angle? Well, she seems to really disagree. What is she seeing that I'm not? Or what am I not seeing? Or whatever. Or what's she making up? <laughs> so I was just thinking, well, when we consider something, we contemplate it. We, it, it becomes the center focus in your mind. And you uh, approach it from different angles. So I thought, well, in my mind, this year, Christmas isn't a bad thing. It isn't scary or, you know, oh, my gosh, watch out. Terrible things happen. No. Um, I mean, this year, I'm thinking make it a contemplative Christmas, a meditative one. So what would I be meditating on? Well, naturally, at Christmas, how about you think about the Christmas story? Put it together, big guy. So in other words, here we have a story of the infinite, eternal, almighty God who created by the word of his power all things and gave life to all creatures and decreed the end from the beginning of what we would call history and indeed the whole world. Yes, that one, your maker, your judge, the one you've known about all your life, but refused to entertain the concept. Well, that God entered this world in the form of a human baby. And prior to that, in a human, I guess you'd call it conceptus, uh, embryo, zygote, fetus, uh, he, he went through all human phases, including human adulthood, and uh, without a flaw not one sin on the man not one well yes he, he was god and he is man he is god and he shit was man he in other words he's the one who's the new thing in the world he's the gift himself because without him coming into this world none of the salvation business would even make it a bit of, a lick of sense think about it what do the worldling religions offer how do they propose that you're going to escape the justice of god or do they even acknowledge that the justice of God exists, that there shall be a righteous judgment, and with, shall we say, wrath and fury attached? In other words, the judge is pissed off. <laughs> we already know that. And we know why. It's our own it's our own treason. So thinking about Christmas some, I thought, you know, Merry Christmas and white snow and trees and reindeer and trees and stuff and little little spheres that various colored balls with phony lights and glittery stuff um, and a lot of food and a lot of noise and a lot of activity but really at the bottom of it it's the story of the infinite and eternal one stepping into this world in order to ultimately make contact with such as you and I and turn us about and give us a new life in Christ we are already raised from the dead in that we believe him and trust him because that trust and that faith is in fact the gift so he's the gift faith is the gift you could say life itself is the gift you could say that everything is a gift and we should give thanks in all circumstances hey that sounds a lot like the apostles now don't it but the point is we're all fallen and we're all fallible and everything else but Christmas time is the time to remember some no matter how bad we get and it's pretty darn bad and no matter how far we fall which is pretty darn ugly um he's better he's redeeming the time he's capturing hearts and souls around the world willy-nilly all the time and he's building his kingdom a kingdom of priests who shall be unto him forever a people glad serene majestic and free and 
equipped with eternal life and immortality in their bodies, human bodies, just like his. Yes, the body of Jesus that came back from the dead was a real human body with human bones and blood and everything else. Got that human DNA going on. And uh, he's got real hair and stuff. He even sweats. <laughs> he's real. And so Christmas is about this guy. Think of it. The, the maker of you came to find you where he made you to be. <laughs> and he did it on time. <laughs> First try. And so we're dealing with a wonderful, wonderful maker who has consistently... Uh, executed wise and good and true judgments in the earth and men scoff and refute and ignore him wrongly and wrongly and wrongly every time and yet they do it we do it all the time why because we're fools on the inside we've been fooled by the lie of the enemy but there was never any hope actually of attaining some quasi equality much less supremacy above our maker that don't make no sense knucklehead <laughs> he made you and causes you to be. He's got the upper hand. <laughs> always. He's always above us. He's always around us, with us. And Christmas is the time to give thanks uh, for his presence in your life and the lives of people around you. The presence of God in the world makes all the difference, makes this madhouse at least tolerable and, and often pleasant, really, because he's just that good. He's generous beyond our understanding and his compassion has no end. So Merry Christmas to you and you and you and you, especially you back there that's trying to hide. <laughs> God bless you. And, and let's all try to remember now, when a religious festival, a religious feast is uh, remembered, there should be good food and fellowship and, and times even of singing. Have you, have you noticed how nobody sings anymore? among families or friends. Maybe you get a happy birthday if you're real lucky. But nobody sings anymore. Feel free to sing this time. It's that time of year when the bells are ringing, they say. <laughs> Have a good lightning-filled rainy day wherever you are. And if it's clear and blue and nice, well, I wish I was there. <laughs> you have a good day and God bless.